There are many issues and concerns uh, that are affecting family farmers in the Caribbean. Um, primarily climate change, um, disorganization in terms of not being able to put all of the inputs together to have good results. Um, there is a lack of um, um, uh, building up of farmers because there is not a great support by national governments for farming. For example, in the Caribbean region, we import some $8 billion worth of foodstuff into the region when we have the opportunity to grow enough to export. So there is a problem. With climate change, we're talking about increased intensity of hurricanes, more hurricanes affecting us. We have the issue of um, pesticides and, um, and other herbicides, which are being linked to cancer and other non-communicable diseases. There are quite a bit of issues that affect. Well, we also have, as a result of the um, pushing of the sarghum seaweed onto the beaches, it's now affecting the um, main industry of most of the Caribbean countries, which is tourism. So we do have uh, quite a number of issues in the Caribbean. Our organization, which is called ACARI, Agriculture Alliance of the Caribbean, what we've done is we've brought together farmers from 10, 11 different countries to look at themselves, to do what they can do to help themselves. But as we do that, we look to see how we can help other, each other across borders. So presently we're looking at a number of things we can do. One of it, which is to develop an agro-processing plant at some point in time, where we could say to farmers in, say, the Lesser Antilles, you grow all of the sweet potatoes that you can, and we will then bring them into, say, Antigua. Antigua would have the processing plant, which will be the hub for those islands around. Now, we have been given some support, but it hasn't materialized yet, but we feel that if we can get some farmers empowered, we're in a position where we can help ourselves. Of course, if we can get help from international institutions, we can get a kickoff and a starting point. But right now, we are relying on what we can do. So um, we're also looking at how we can build capacity for farmers who might not have the same level of, of expertise, same level of education, same level of uh, ability. So as we look at each level, we try to bring each one further up so that there is some sustainability for the future. And when it comes to family farming, we believe that this um, effort over the past few days will help us to focus, to bring focus, and to cause everyone in the Caribbean region to realize that finding a way to develop food sovereignty is important. We can't just talk about sovereignty as we talk about um, food um, and nutrition, sustainability. And, and, and at the end of the day, we want to cover all of the 17 sustainable development goals. We, we are, we're committed to the decade. Um, we want to do whatever we can because we want to learn from others and we believe that we have some things that we can show other people as well. Because as we talk about the future, we believe that organic is a way to go to help us to mitigate and adapt to the 
meth the, the, the things that are affecting us. For example, um, when we look at um, the non-communicable diseases, um, there, there's, there's that connection between those diseases and the kind of food we're eating. Um, and, and, and some of the foods we eat are really not real food. And, and we know real food. We have grown up of real food. We have planted real food. And so we want to get back to developing our ecosystems so that we can do a better job than we're doing now.